jasonsolomons.com. I'm joined by Gabriel Clark, who is one of the directors of Steve McQueen, The Man and Le Mans. Gabriel, welcome to the show. Hi, Jason. Uh, congratulations. Uh, first of all, I mean, I, I should have congratulated you on, on getting getting Steve McQueen into Cannes, into the Cannes Classics. That must have been an extremely exciting thing to happen. It was, absolutely. It was That was back in May. We, we saw you in May in, in Cannes, and it was fan- fantastic. We, we only finished the film. Um, our final sort of uh, offline at the end of February and, and our sales agent in America had said we want you to try and get it done by then because we're going to try and enter the can so that, that in a way the, the, the pace, the relative pace at which we had to edit was worth it because it, it, it got into can and got uh, uh, a, a pretty good uh, round of publicity at that time back yeah. in May. What, um, what do you think it was? was great for its lift off, you know. What do you think it was about the, that film that appealed to Cannes? I mean, obviously it's Le Mans, but a race, and this is, it's got a lot of cinema in there. I mean, in a way, people talk about the film in your film, uh, the film that Steve McQueen was making. It's got Steve McQueen, it's got racing cars, what more do you need? And it's kind of like that for your doc, but for Cannes, it's also got. It's about cinema and movie stardom as well. I, I think absolutely. I think that's that's the reason why that particular category, can Classic, uh, were keen on on having it uh, there. It, just because there is not only a nostalgic element, I think, to the film inevitably, because it's as you say a documentary about the making of Le Mans, but also I think um, the the way in which we try in the film, I think for the first time, to put in context McQueen as a filmmaker. And for all the difficulties he had making this film, which are, which are key to the, the drama and the tension in our documentary, it's the bigger, the broader picture is for the first time maybe people are able to see not only just Steve McQueen, the actor, but this sense of Steve McQueen, the, the uh, mogul, and Steve McQueen, the would-be, wannabe director and yeah. filmmaker. And, and the obsession that involved in both. It's interesting, isn't it? Because the, there's an obsession involved in sp- being top of your, your game, whether it be Ronaldo, A.P. McCoy, uh, a sports, you know, a, a, a driver uh, from Lewis Hamilton all the way to, to Andretti, uh, but also to being top of your game as a movie star. And those two things are coming together with Steve McQueen, those t- twin obsessions, really, or maybe too, too much to have twin obsessions. Absolutely. I mean, our, our um, one of our key lines on our poster ever since we made it, really, since we since I first started putting down the structure was obsession uh, along with betrayal uh, and um, yes he, he at that time well not just at that time I mean for a good five to six years before 1970 he'd been wanting to make the ultimate racing film uh, because of his love of, of all things um, on wheels <laughs> and he'd combined with John Sturgis obviously who, who he knew from uh, The Great Escape and The Magnificent Seven the director who in a way was Steve's father mm. and and um, helped him grow as an actor, gave him his break. And they'd had in mind this project called Day of a Champion, um, but it was beaten to the punch by um, John Frankenheimer, who was making Grand Prix yeah. with James Garner. So that added to this sense of obsession for McQueen. He, he now wanted to make, he, if he couldn't do the first racing movie, he wanted to do the best racing movie. And it was this search for realism, which he shared with Sturgis in the beginning, which led them to Le Mans, and to led them to this extravagant concept of having not just um, the cars themselves there, but the best racing drivers as well. You know, ima- imagine today having Lewis Hamilton, having Rosberg, having all those guys in one place for six months. Yeah, I mean, you might get a cameo yeah. out of them. You, know, you before might get the a race. cameo, but you ain't going to get them behind the wheel of a car, and their 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 teams and their insurers certainly aren't going to uh, allow them to do that, as much as they may be starstruck by a you know, by a, uh, by a top movie star of today. So it, it, in its way, the, the obsession is, is evident from just the scale of the project that McQueen put together on the starting grid at Le Mans. The best director, one of the best directors in the business, himself as a, a, his production company, some of the best technicians uh, in the business, the newest technology in terms of cameras, mm. in terms of the way that he wanted uh, racing to be captured, and the racing drivers themselves extravagant in a way ludicrous when you think about it in hindsight <laughs> he was heading for a fall but that was that was as you say that was the obsession behind it all did you get i mean uh, really behind the lines it was a quite an obsession for you to kind of find the, the the archive footage almost like this kind of holy grail of stuff that was going on were you equally obsessed you become equally obsessed. I think once once your once your project is given the green light, well, obviously it's it's an obsession to get it going, get it get it off the grid. Excuse the pun. But once you once we were funded, um, 
one of the key things for us, and this might have happened actually before we got fully funded, was to find the Holy Grail, which essentially was the footage that was shot by McQueen over the course of these six months. The rushes, which everyone we spoke to essentially, including his son, including his former wife, including uh, directors and people who worked on the project, said had been lost. Um, and there was about a million feet of film that he shot, essentially of cars, but, but it was shot because there was no script. Mm. So getting an idea of McQueen, the, f the filmmaker, was, uh, was going to r would really be helped if we found this footage. And for several months, as we talked to people, as we did our pre-interview interviews, and, uh, and in terms of casting, knowing who we wanted to talk to, um, we asked everybody this question. And we were pretty much getting to a point where we where we'd given up, where we felt that if we're going to have to use footage to explain McQueen's vision, we're going to have to take it from the original film, which is okay, but you know there isn't mm, as much as you'd want. And uh, anyway, we we talked to an editor uh, who who's not in the film, but I he was uh, helpful in terms of several bits of information. And the, at the end of the conversation, he said, "No, I don't think the film exists, but try this edit house in Los Angeles." We tried the edit house, we sent them a chain of emails, they knew that Chad McQueen was backing the project, which helped, they knew that Neil McQueen was backing the project, and we got an email back saying, we found 400 to 600 boxes of film <laughs> under one of our sound stages marked Le Mans. We didn't believe it until we saw it, uh, my co-director John McKenna went over to Los Angeles, and uh, there they were. So that was absolutely brilliant news, and obviously, we weren't able to use n n all of it. Yeah. Our budget wouldn't stretch yeah. to, to transfer what I like about footage. But your film is that y is th the bits that you it. have used, yeah. you know, that you've used it very judiciously, I have to say, which is very skillful I I in the making of it. What was it that... What was it about this this film, this project? Because there is a Le Mans. It's not like it's a lost film. Like that, you know, it, 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 it's not a perfect film, uh, the, the original Le Mans. But so, what was it about your, your that attracted you to kind of go? Well, why why isn't it as good as all the other Steve McQueen movies? What was it about this one and McQueen together that that kind of attracted you to make a film about them? Well, I think the, f for me, the, what attracted me most about about it was just the story ar around it. You know, the fact that you have a, here, here is a guy who has been hugely successful. Here is a guy who has a love racing and 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 the desire to to make even more of himself I mean, McQueen came from essentially nothing to become one of the the greatest movie actors of his generation if not all time and in 1969 he he pretty much had everything and it and it's the story essentially is of the that that tragic hero who has this ambition obsession but it will also a huge ego at that time a great deal of vanity a great deal of power which he misuses and it's that th it's the essence that tragic flaw mm -hmm. essentially was the great appeal in the story you know and and yet 45 years on there is a sense of vindication in elements of the film that he made yeah. people are able to trace you know and not not just people who love racing but people who love film are able to see in le mans especially in the first 35 minutes elements of how this vision of the ultimate racing film and, and doing it superbly realistically capturing the essence um, was there, and he managed to capture it, not for 90 minutes, I'm afraid, um, but but for for several uh, moments, great moments, and that's to be admired, and that that's the vindication. Weird, isn't it? That th there's this actor, and actors are always trying to get more screen time. Big stars want the want the, you know the best lines and the big you know the big kind of close-ups that he couldn't find a script to go with it. You know, was he so obsessed with capturing the cars that he just didn't care about the story? Or is there not a story that you can weave in to make that action kind of work better? Is, it, is that just the kind of the general kind of problem with sports movies like that? I, I think it, it either has to be one or the other. It either has to be a, a documentary which is naturalistic, uh, in which the cars star, if you like. He, it cannot be, or, or it has to be a three-act, essentially, Hollywood film. Mm you know, the conventional film, which involves not just the racing, it involves subplots to do with romance, subplots to do with conflict, and, and Le Mans itself falls between those quite badly. Um, and McQueen told the studios he was going to make uh, a Hollywood movie. He got them to pay pretty much fund $6 million worth of filming, and he went over budget by another one and a half million. Um, but he never really had any intention of doing that. And that's the fascination of the story at that time. Okay, well, congratulations. It is a fascinating film. Steve McQueen, The Man and Le Mans. It kind of gets everything there. It's got Steve McQueen, it's got racing cars, uh, and it's, it's got film history in there as well. I, I really enjoyed it very much. Thank you for coming on the show.
Thank you, Jason.